So hey Dan. Hey, how's it going? Uh, we are here at the uh, Stylophone booth. Stylophone booth indeed, oh, yes. Yeah. And I'm so we've got some wonderful new things to share with you today. So the DS2 we've heard all about, we, we released that last year. We're loving it so far. But what we did with the DPM is, or the DS2 is we introduced the CPM range. And obviously being a range of instruments, we've got a couple more we want to bring to the table. So the drone synth being what it was, obviously it was missing envelopes and a couple of options. So this sort of extends what you're able to do with it, but also it becomes a very, very powerful multi-utility module for any case for any opportunity. So what we basically have here, we've got a dual envelope along with two filters here. And these filters can be run in series or in parallel, very simply. To run it in series, you just go audio out into audio in, turn off filter one, audio out you know, will go directly because it's already hardwired into the thing, and you have running your filter in series. Or you could run it in parallel, very easy. The beauty behind this device is it's been described as the beauty and the beast in terms of filters. So what we have here is we've got the uh, traditional Gen R8 filter, which is really a squelchy, gritty powerhouse of a filter. It's got some animosity behind it. The 2045 filter, on the other hand, we've got is really an emulation of, you know, Madonna, French House, sort of Daft Punk kind of era sound, right? That, those, those, are the, those, are, those are the eras using that 2045 filter and making it really quite famous. But what the original 2540 filter, or 2045 filter had was just a standard 24 dB, you know, low pass filter. So what we've done and, and gone ahead is we've combined it with the Gen R8 filters to give you a band plus plus, a band resist plus, and a notch plus. The plus being the top filter being a Gen R8 filter, the low pass being a 2045 filter. So we've stacked it on top of it. Now, obviously, those two being very different self-oscillating filters, like I said, the Gen R8 squelchy powerhouse, the 2045 soft. So what we've done in, in the 2045 combined filters is they all self-resonate at every cutoff point. But what we've done is we've made sure that the, uh, the, the, the Gen R8 filter, when combined with the 2045, is at a slower resonating you know, climb than the 2045. So that way, the predominant sound, the predominant resonating peak is still that 2045 filter, just giving you that Gen R8 notch power on top of it to give you that extra bit of grit, if you so might want to. And then the other thing that I find really, really quite insightful about this unit is this little envelope and gate follower. So depending on your audio in, that can determine your threshold level. So the higher your threshold, the higher level it is. And that can send gates to trigger your envelope one to make your envelopes play. So that can actually be a trigger. Or what you can do is you can route a kick drum into audio in, mute the audio in, send that out into audio in here, and use this for a side chain. So this, this, this envelope here can essentially be a, a pumping or a ducking side chain feature by, by how you patch it. And so you know, with the, the, the gates in combination with the envelope and the filter, again, really it is sort of a mostly a multi-utility module. Um, but the one thing I find really, really is desirable about this is all the filters self-resonate in a very, very promising way. And they start self-resonating right around that 3 o'clock range. So you can, you can have a, a wide range of how much you kind of want it to self-oscillate and how much power you want to get out of it. And it really gives you a wide range of sounds where even still, you can play this filter as it can generate tone. On top of the fact that you've got some noise inputs in and out on there, you can very much use it for some percussive sort of snappy elements on top of that as well, right? So should the we, main purpose of this is a multi-utility module, but it can do so much more than that as well. Should we hear a bit of the filters then? Let's do should it. We, I would let's love hear that. some yeah. sound coming through. So they're just self-resonating. So now. this is purely just a self-resonating filter. Yeah, nothing going into it, no sound. And you see there's varying degree to how much they kind of resonate. Then we've got noise. And the other thing we have is there's also a sample and hold built into it with rate and slew. So you can either have the filters being modulated by the envelopes or by the sample and hold.
and there's slew, which makes it completely slide naturally between things. To your standard sample and hold. You can see immediately as we start to switch to the 2045s, it gets a lot softer, a lot mellower. Even though the filters are still self-resonating, it's not quite as gritty, not quite as powerful. So should we just hear a bit of them should Sorry, we just hear a bit of uh, tone going through them? Yeah. yeah, so we'll get a little bit of tone. So now we've got the DS2 patched in there, and we can see we'll go through the different filter types to just kind of hear it. So we'll do a cutoff link just so we can make our filters do the same thing, and we'll just start off at our notch filter. Great, so is, is it available now? And so this is a pure prototype. This is honestly the, there are two, there are two available, or there's two in the world right now. And so we're hoping to have it ready by September-ish. That's kind of our, our main goal. It'll depend on a couple of factors because we're still troubleshooting a couple of things with them and making sure we can get the production where we want it to be. But it is, uh, we're really aiming for a September release. That's the main goal. That's really what we're focused on, and, and we're really excited about it. Because the DS2 is now finally available for purchase, so we really want to get our successor available quick, because what the DF8 opens in, in, in Realms for what you can do with the DS2, it just opens up into a fully, full-blown modular synth at this point, right? Yeah, and you've got like a little link, uh, a little link piece as well, so you can link the two together. Exactly, yeah. So it's super, super easy. I'll show you how it works, actually. There's just this little standard clip that we have like that, and the cases are designed so that there's kind of horizontal grids there that you just slide the grid in there, and that locks it vertically. Then you just pop the clip on. It's all becoming basically one little synth now. Nice. So I'm guessing if we're like a early prototype stage, or if we're a prototype stage still, we don't kind of have a price point, or are we similar it's, to? It's going to be very similar to the DS2. Yeah, we don't have an exact price point just yet, but it's really going to be all the all the elements in the compact mo mo uh, compact portable modular range are all aimed to be around the same price point. And the whole focus behind this range is to break down the barriers to entry for modular synth, right? Not having to buy a case, not having to buy a power supply, not having to do research about how much power your modules are consuming. All these things are massive barriers in the modular world that it's growing, it's expanding. People want modular synth more than they ever have. And so the idea is this can be something a five-year-old kid who just saw modular synth on the internet and told his parents, I want a modular synth for Christmas. They can get this, they can put batteries into it, they can put the speaker and they can have their very first synth experience five minutes after opening it out of the box. But on the other hand, it's all standard Eurorack compatible. So these screws can all come out, 
it takes, I believe it's 42 or 44 HP. And I'm not positive on the power supply of the DF8, but the power supply of the DF2 is under 200 millivolts. Like it's next to nothing. It takes barely any power for the fact that it's 42, her 42 HP. And again, it can be entirely powered by your rack power supply fit in there. So it can be your very first synth, or it can be something that can scale and grow with you for as far deep down the modular rabbit hole as you ever choose to go. Brilliant. Well, yeah. Dan, thank you very much for speaking well, to thank us. You, thank you so much for having us, Ed. This has been a delight. You know, Stylophone, we're, we're really excited to share this compact modular range. It's something that we've been, it's, it's been in the works for a while, and now to finally have a couple of these devices, you know, in person to be able to noodle around with is something that I could have only dreamed of, and, and we're really excited to see where the next products in this line actually end up going. Nice one. Thank you. Thank you so much, man.